So thank you very much for uh, inviting me uh, today uh, to to give some uh, some thoughts, some some opinions uh, on the very important issue of uh, the youth guarantee program uh, and uh, of the situation of uh, youth unemployment. Uh, within the European uh, Union. Uh, maybe you allow me to make some uh, general remarks on the uh, situation uh, as it is today and uh, has been uh, for the last uh, 10 years, uh, and then uh, have, uh, have a view on, uh, on what is upcoming from the uh, Commission side. And uh, afterwards, I'm, I'm, I'm keen to, to hear your questions and um, your remarks you uh, you have on that um, on that issue. Um, so let me start with some some general remarks. Um, uh, youth unemployment uh, has been a, a problem in within the European Union for a long time now, um, especially and I think you can say that uh, the, the financial crisis um, has been really. A booster to uh, to that uh, situation that uh, young str people struggled in finding a job or a training possibility, and uh, youth unemployment will become an even greater problem uh, with a new and for all of us unexpected uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so uh, I'm afraid we will see. Uh, developments we will see very soon uh, in general on the labor market, of course, also uh, for, for young people. And uh, the financial crisis has shown us that especially uh, the youngest in our society uh, um, are, are always uh, the biggest losers uh, in such, uh, such crisis. So um, youth unemployment is something that we have to combat together uh, in the Union, European Union because it affects the complete society. And I know we, we have frequently discussions uh, on European level. Well, uh, this is not a topic which is uh, up to the EU. Uh, membership, uh, member states are responsible uh, for this. Uh, so what are you doing? Uh, uh, why, uh, why do you want to, to be involved? Uh, but for me, it is very clear uh, this topic is, especially in some member states, is uh, of such high importance uh, that it would be a complete fatal uh, signal if we as a European Union only say, okay, the, the, the development uh, is very bad, the, the, the situation is quite poor, uh, but it's up to you. Uh, we cannot do anything. So in my eyes, it was completely right uh, that, uh, that we took action and that we are going to uh, take action again. Uh, because uh, if you see the, the impacts on the whole society, we have a lot of uh, social consequences uh, that are very close uh, connected uh, to youth unemployment. We have uh, psychological and health problem. We have uh, uh, social, cultural and social isolation uh, uh, problems with uh, stigmatizations. Of course, we also have uh, family tensions and uh, family conflicts because unemployment is, uh, in my eyes, a thing, not only a single person is affected with that, uh, the whole family is uh, affected uh, to that. And uh, uh, of course, then we have uh, the financial troubles, uh, which, are, which are caused by that, and in some cases also alcohol and, uh, and drug abuse. So we have uh, uh, really uh, uh, a vicious circle. And in my eyes, we have to do everything on the one hand to to pretend pe to, to prevent that people uh, go into that vicious circle and uh, to help people who are in this vicious circle uh, to, uh, to 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 get out of that uh, circle so uh, I'm, 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 i repeat myself uh, i really appreciate that uh, uh, in 2013 uh, the European Union launched the Youth Guarantee Program. And if you see the development um, overall, uh, 
Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about uh, single member states. I'm, I'm talking about the overall development. Then we can see that youth unemployment dropped from 24% in 2000, 2013 to 14.6% in February 2019. So uh, not, not every single goal might be achieved because um, although 14.6% um, percent of unemployed uh, young people of youth unemployment is 14.6% too much, uh, I think we all all, all agree on uh, on that. But you can see a very clear uh, de de development in in that. And uh, so um, overall, you can say uh, bringing up the youth guarantee um, is is was 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 a right decision. And in fact, it is a it it, it is a it is a success. And uh, now. Uh, we, we, we have the proposal that the European Commission is coming up with a, with a new proposal to, to tackle, uh, to tackle uh, youth unemployment. And uh, for me, it's very important um, when we, when we are, uh, this, uh, start the discussion now, uh, well, we, we start the discussion uh, quite soon, uh, that we have some, some points in it. Um, which are, in my eyes, very important because um, I, I also told this uh, Commissioner Schmidt uh, before setting up the new program, we have to to keep a very close look on what did work out very good within the last program and what didn't work. So for me is one point very important and it is more important than the question how much money should uh, uh, should be within the program. For me the most important thing is that we ensure uh, a, a, a kind of, of a quality standard um, uh, in, 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 in what we are offering to young people because my interest uh, also as a coordinator of EPP group for social issues is, is that we can that we do not invest money in in uh, in in, uh, uh, in 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 nicer statistics uh, i want to ensure that we invest money in young people and that we can ensure that what 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 is delivered to the people that it is an offer uh, of really quality jobs so i do not want uh, uh, short time traineeships i want uh, quality jobs and uh, a quality of of vocational training and uh, i think this also fits very very good with uh, what the commission brought up uh, with a European uh, pillar of social rights and uh, its national implementation. So we really have to ensure that. And for me also very important is uh, that in, uh, in bringing up this new program that social partners uh, are involved from the, from the very beginning uh, because this is, uh, you, and, and you mentioned where I'm coming from and what is my personal background uh, and uh, especially from my, my German background uh, I believe and the future of, of vocational training and the German example is, is showing it very well. Uh, it is uh, really helpful to have social partners uh, on board uh, because it is much easier for them to deliver solutions and uh, uh, then, uh, then, then, then politicians here in, in Brussels can, can deliver that. And uh, uh, for me, and, uh, that, uh, that, that is also my, my closing remark uh, on that. Um, what is really driving me uh, in this is when you see we have uh, youth unemployment rates in some member states uh, beyond 40%. So nearly the, the the half of the of the young generation is without employment and uh, with, without uh, without any perspective for it, and this is this is really a danger for the democracy in in Europe. We have seen the situation in Italy with a left and right wing populism uh, uh, government. We have. Uh, 
We have the situation in France that in European election, uh, Front National has been the, uh, 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 the, the biggest winner with, within the uh, elections. And uh, we, we, we could add, unfortunately, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, further examples. So it is, it is really, it is really an, an urgent topic uh, here in the European Union that we do everything uh, to, to fight youth unemployment, to deliver uh, 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 a perspective and uh, 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 a worthy future uh, for the young generation. Uh, because uh, uh, if, if we do not, uh, if we are not able to, to tackle this, uh, we, we endanger uh, our democratic system. So thank you very much. So thanks a lot, um, Dennis Radke, for your um, insights from the Youth Guarantee Program. So, uh, Mr. Radke, we cannot see you at the moment. So I don't know whether um, your camera is not working or whether the internet connection. I, I don't know, but no, I can see you. I can see you. Thanks for um, your um, readiness to take questions from the floor and also from um, the. Um, yeah, virtual audience. So we have also participants out there um, who are participating online, um, as you do at the moment. And um, everybody is welcome to type in questions into the chat, and then um, I will read um, out loud the questions for Mr. Radke. But maybe we have also questions from the floor. So there's one question from um, Stephanie Scherer. She is from the University of Trento. Please, um, Stephanie. Start with the first question. I'm, I'm acting here as the, the representation of the southern European countries. And of course, it's hard to be not uh, uh, in, in agreement with the fact that we have to do something to bring young people into the labor market and things like that. I just would like to, to, to point out that even in southern er Europe, it's not that dramatic as we were told. Um, like if you have 40% of youth unemployment, well, this is dramatically high, but it still does not mean that 40% of the young people are unemployed. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Radke, would you like to comment on this statement? Well, well I, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, well, okay. Uh, uh, might be a question: How you uh, how want to, how you want to express how, how dramatic the situation is? For me, I, I do not feel more comfortable uh, with that uh, with that remark. Uh, and uh, I think we really have to to uh, to take action. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. Are there any other questions from the floor? So Bernd Fitzenberger from EAB raises his hand. Um, can you thank you for the for this talk and also putting in the the, the political uh, aspects of things and and the views from uh, being a member of the European Parliament and also from coming from the rural area. Uh, I would like uh, maybe to ask you what do you think about the success of the youth guarantee program uh, and, and how could it be improved more specifically and what kind of evidence would you like to see as policy maker? I'm asking this as an academic who does research and who does policy consulting and I would, would be sort of interested more specifically when you talk about these issues, what kind uh, of uh, things you would like to know from us, for instance. Thank you. Well, uh, that, that, that is what I... Uh, 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 I have an echo now. I myself. We cannot so hear I, you very well at the moment. Uh, I, I hear... Um, we try. Um, yeah, I, I try again. I'm always hearing. My... Did you hear me? Uh, no, I, I understood the question. Okay, perfect. Uh, so that, that is what I told I, also to Commissioner Schmidt. From, uh, it is very important before we start with a new program. 
Uh, I have to uh, also look um, in, in, in what, what could be actions did we invest the money the now uh, closed program? So what has been really um, uh, um, quality vocational training for instance, like we know it for German standards? And what has only been, uh, I don't know, a short, a short time uh, traineeship uh, in, in in a company. So uh, that that would be very important for me, uh, for for me to know because uh, for, for me always a standard is a vocational training like we know it in Germany and uh, everybody uh, uh, all over Europe and, and envies us uh, to to our system. Okay, so thanks a lot. Are there any other questions from the floor or from the internet participants? So if not, I have um, maybe one question. So um, there is some um, recent uh, research in academics which shows that young people um, hit by a crisis may also benefit um, from high unemployment rates because they may not start to um, enter training, they may not start an apprenticeship training. Um, but get more um, education, um, like more school education, or decide to go to universities um, because of the lack of um, yeah, job opportunities in the labor market. So um, is um, this issue um, is, um, also uh, discussed um, in, in politics so that it may be um, eventually a good way to support young people to go this way, to get higher training and um, yeah, to, to obtain higher degrees and um, support these young people so in order to able that each individual is um, able to afford uh, this um, additional education. Um, uh, to, to, to be honest, uh, at the moment, this is not part of uh, uh, this discussion here at the moment. Um, and of uh, uh, I fully agree uh, the, the higher the qualification, no, no, no doubt about that. But if you if you look on on the situation in Germany, we have a complete different discussion because in Germany we have uh, everyone wants to go to a university. The interest in vocational training is decreasing. And that is causing also some problems on the German labor market. Because uh, we need also plumbers and uh, not only scientists. Yes, so maybe a follow-up question. So thanks a lot. A follow-up question would be then, um, so what do you suggest? How could we um, um, support these young people who are maybe too far away of getting higher education, going to university? So those who go, leave um, the um, lower track schools at the moment who do not find apprenticeship training um, positions and who end up um, yeah, uh, somewhere in, in nowhere, in, in nowhere, and are not um, not involved in uh, in the job market, and also not in education. Uh, well, uh, and, and encourage them is uh, is is very good, but uh, at the moment uh, the, the plans are here, uh, uh, setting the complete wrong signals from uh, Brussels, because at the moment we have the discussion uh, to to cut the, the the Erasmus program, which is one major point uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 support. And uh, uh, when you see at the financial planning at the moment, uh, uh, after uh, after the, uh, the the summit, uh, we have a decrease in Erasmus program. So uh, we are uh, we are sending the, the complete wrong uh, signals here from the European uh, level with with view on that. And uh, uh, maybe allow me to 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 add uh, one more point. Uh, beyond uh, the question of um, of university degrees, uh, in the due the during the the last financial crisis, we had a, a program here in Germany called MobiPro, uh, where we wanted to support young people from uh, uh, from uh, other European countries to come to Germany to make a vocational training here in Germany, uh, and we didn't go on in Germany with the program. 
which I regret very much because, uh, as I just said, we, we are discussing a lot of uh, we do not have enough people for vocational trainings. Uh, we need uh, the, 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 the craftsmen uh, companies, uh, the SMEs are always complaining and say, Mr. Radke, we, we do not find uh, enough people for our jobs. And on the other hand, we have a lot of young people uh, without uh, employment. So uh, I think this program could really reactive this re reactivate this program could could really uh, 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 could really help us in, in bringing these things together. So, and in your opinion, what was the main reason why the Mobi Pro um, program was not successful? So, what were the barriers which we could maybe lift in this crisis? Uh, well, but. Uh, okay. When I when I when I talk to the to the companies who, who did attend, uh, especially also in the uh, in the hotel sector, I, I talked to a, to a lot of hotel owners uh, uh, who had some uh, some young people from all over Europe uh, in their uh, in their vocational training, and they said uh, they they gave up the training. And please don't laugh at me when 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 uh, when I say this now, but. Uh, um, a, a lot of uh, company owners uh, said, "Well, I uh, one or two, uh, and they, they they felt a bit lonely, uh, so far away from home, uh, and and this is really, yeah, I, I I just said, don't don't laugh, but people people are like people are. Uh, we, we we cannot redesign them. Uh, so I think this this is a human problem and a hu human feeling, and so." Uh, so you have to deal this uh, serious, and uh, I, I think this is uh, uh, what, what, uh, what one of the problems. And when you when when you are uh, talking of reactivating and redesigning a such program, uh, you have to take this into account. Okay, thanks a lot. So now we have an online question from the um, online audience. So there's um, Christian from Romania, and he asks. Um, so the shift towards human capital accumulation are normal in times of crises. The important thing for youth guarantee programs is to ensure access to quality education and training. Yeah. So it was not directly a question, but comment, but maybe you would like to comment on this comment. <laughs> Yeah, but it, 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 it fits it, it fits what I what I said uh, just said before. Uh, um, it, for for me, the the, the, the quality aspects um, are, are very important. Uh, I don't want to invest money in in uh, uh, just have nice statistics. I really uh, want uh, want want quality jobs. And if someone from from Romania uh, is is making that remark. And then let me add that for me it's also very important. We have a, a freedom in the freedom of movement, which is very important, uh, 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 and uh, which is one uh, one nucleus of the European Union. But it is also important that in, in Eastern European countries, especially in Romania and Bulgaria, uh, young people have a perspective and are willing to stay in their country and uh, uh, in, in helping uh, uh, in, in, in growth in their country. Uh, we, in Germany especially, we have a discussion, oh, well, uh, let's collect uh, experts from all over the world and then all our problems are served, uh, solved. But if we are collecting uh, experts from all over the world, especially also from Romania and Bulgaria, uh, who is solving the problem there? So this is also a, a very important topic. And uh, when you look in the development of, of some regions there, uh, it, is, uh, it is really a, a dangerous uh, development. Okay, thanks a lot. So the online discussion continues. There's Kelly Illison from Estonia, and he or she asks, so the aim of the Youth Guarantee Program is to ensure that all young people receive a good quality offer of employment, continued education, yeah. apprenticeship, traineeship, within a period of four months of becoming unemployed or leaving formal education. In some cases, the four months is not enough. What do you think about that? Should it be more flexible? Uh. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not sure. A very, a very good, uh, a very good question. Uh, 
may, maybe uh, for, for me the, the, the maybe the, the time of the uh, of the offer um, is not so important uh, like the question of, uh, of of quality. So I would agree in in saying uh, more flexibility uh, could be a solution. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. So I see a question from the floor, so from the on-site participants. Malte Sandner would like to ask a question. Um, mobility, labor mobility is a very important aspect to yeah, prevent uh, youth unemployment. And um, during the COVID-19 crisis, during the lockdown, this uh, mobility between countries was very much um, yeah, reduced or not possible at all. And when it was already possible to travel within countries, it was still not possible to move from one country to another. And I think this was something where the European Union was not yeah, working as I at least would have expected this. And yeah, can you comment on this, why the mobility was between the countries, between the member countries longer, um, not possible as within countries? Um, yeah, I, 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 how, how the hmm? European Parliament also, or which opportunity the European Parliament has to maybe next time change this and yeah, to improve this? Yeah. Maybe starting with, with, uh, with your last point, um, we, we are working on that. Uh, Manfred Weber made a, a proposal uh, within the beginning of the of the week uh, of this week uh, to uh, uh, to implement uh, the same same standards for uh, for that. Uh, but I, I really share your your concerns. Uh, we we had the situation. Uh, uh, especially also in Northrhine Westphalia, where we have in the in the region of Aachen uh, a lot of uh, cross-border workers uh, close to Belgium, close to the Netherlands. In Bavaria, we had a, a situation with a lot of people uh, working in the care sector and living in in the Czech Republic. They had to decide: Do I go to work? and uh, then uh, 14 days of quarantine or do I stay at home and uh, this has nothing to do with uh, uh, with uh, freedom of for labor mobility and so on and and, and uh, uh, it, it took some time uh, then we, we we offered the solution with a kind of uh, green lines at the at the border uh, it took a bit long, but uh, we, we delivered something. But now we are back in the problem, uh, as you mentioned. And now I'm, I'm re so I'm really glad that uh, Manfred Weber uh, brought up this discussion uh, at the beginning of the week and, and said we, we need some standards to, to ensure that we do not fall back into, uh, into this problem again. Okay, so thanks a lot. Are there any more questions from the floor or from the internet? So um, then I may continue with a question on um, health, um, mental health problems. So you also um, emphasized in your talk that health problems are yeah, also one of the effects um, of youth unemployment, of um, difficulties of um, the school, of a failing school to work transition. However, in academics, there's also a um, big discussion um, on what's um, the cause and what's the effect. So, um, of course, unemployment, um, youth unemployment may trigger health problems, mental problems, but on the other hand, also um, adolescents who have already health or mental problems um, have more difficulties um, finding a job. So, as a person who um, observed the, the youth um, labor market now for a long time, do you have the feeling that um, health problems um, among adolescents are increasing over time? So do we have, a, let's say, a changing quality in um, the, the young people's um, yeah, um, cohort? Or what is your observation on that? Well, uh, to, 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 to be honest, uh, the, the increase of uh, mental health problems uh, I think I, I should I should leave to to, to psychology, uh, uh, but 
and that I'm, I'm very glad that we are in a situation now that we can discuss uh, quite open uh, um, um, about such topics. Maybe the uh, increasing of uh, of health problems has has something to do with uh, one hand to be more open, uh, to uh, to uh, discuss it, and on the other hand uh, that we have now um, uh, other possibilities in, uh, in diagnostics than we had uh, uh, 20 or, or 30, 30 years ago. I think something like like burnout, maybe. 20 years ago, no one knew what burnout is. Uh, so if people are affected by this, they think, oh, well, it's not tough enough. Uh, and, and, and today we, we, we know what it is, and uh, uh, we, we, we know um, uh, how to help, to support. But if they're really in the action, increasing, uh, that is important. OK, thank you. So if there's no more questions from the floor, I would um, like to conclude with the last question. So we talked um, already a lot about the youth program and of, um, whether it works um, or whether not. So um, if I ask you, um, you can now decide about the spending of, of, of the funding. So what would be the measures um, in which you would invest most of the money? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm glad I, I cannot decide on on, on my own. Uh, but uh, for, for for me, this this decision uh, has to be made up with uh, uh, under the uh, involvement of uh, of social partners, so that we can really ensure that we uh, invest the money we are willing to give and we are willing to to invest uh, into the right programs and into uh, quality traineeship. Uh, so this would be my my solution and uh, my answer to that. Okay. So thanks a lot, um, Dennis Gratke, for your um, insights from politics, for um, answering all our questions. Um, yeah, and I hope you have um, a good success, great success in um, developing the, the youth guarantee program um, further. And um, yeah, we, let's hope that the youth unemployments do not um, rise in the way we, um, we expect at the moment. And thanks a lot again. Yeah. Enjoy your coffee break. Yeah. <laughs>